Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to Mysteries from Beyond the Other Dominion. I'm your host, Dr. Franklin Rule, and now, the secret of the moon's origin, roll tape. Now to tell you about the one-two punch concerning the moon's origin. Now there are a number of theories that have been advanced for the moon's origin. First, that it was a stray celestial wonder that became entrapped in the Earth's gravitational field, achieving a stable orbit about our planet. Another idea is the volcanic hypothesis, that a volcanic eruption expelled a huge chunk of the Earth where the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean is, and that became our moon. Then there's the extraterrestrial hypothesis, advanced by Russian astrophysicists, that the moon was actually converted into a titanic spacecraft, a natural moon, and then placed in orbit by design by these ETs, whose bodies may still be lying in the core of the moon. A fourth idea is the giant impactor thesis, that a protoplanet the size of Mars slammed into the Earth, was pulverized, and sent skewing out into orbit, forming the moon. Well, the latest theory, the one-two punch, is an elaboration on that. The idea is that this protoplanet slammed into the Earth tangentially, was initially pulverized, and most of its mass was shot into the atmosphere, and quickly recoalesced in a matter of hours. It formed a second body, then slammed back into the Earth a second time. Most of its material was then spewed back, but this time higher, in an orbit that was about 16,000 miles above the Earth, and over the course of several months, coalesced again, but achieved stability, and gradually moved out to its present position of 240,000 miles. And that double impact would have stabilized our planet's axis so that it's now at 23 and a half degrees off-center, but gives us our four seasons. It also meant that it wasn't wobbling around like it was. It also gave us a 24-hour day and created the chasms in the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean that set the stage for the formation of oceans and therefore indirectly set the stage for the type of life on our planet today. Now, it is even possible that this impact from outer space brought with it the building blocks of life and set the stage for biogenesis on terra firma. Or contrary-wise, in impacting the Earth, it picked up the basic building blocks of life and took them into orbit. In either case, this means that life could exist, not necessarily on the surface of the moon, but certainly deep within lunar caves that have been sealed off for eons. Let's look now at two cinematic conceptualizations of just what type of life might be in lunar caves. We start off first with radar men from the moon from 1950, followed by the 1959 sci-fi flick, Missile to the Moon. Let's see those lunar creatures right now. Roll tape. Welcome, Commando Cody. I am Retic, ruler of the moon. Apparently, you are expecting me. Of course. For many years, our radio has kept us informed of events on Earth. And my men there have advised me of your every move. I see you have adopted our language. Yes. All our people are required to speak English, so we can operate more efficiently in your country. Do you mind telling me why your men are carrying out that campaign of destruction on Earth? Not at all. They are merely softening up your defenses for our impending invasion. Why do you want to invade the Earth? Because the atmosphere on the moon has become so thin and dry, it is impossible for us to raise food, except in pressurized greenhouses. And none of us can move outside without helmets. So we are planning a mass migration to your world. You will find that conquering the Earth isn't so simple. Ah, but it will be. Because of our atomic weapons, on the moon we have an element, lunarium, which is far superior to uranium as a base for atomic reactions. And we can completely control the force of these reactions, enabling us to build atomic weapons ranging from huge cannons to these small ray pistols. considered of you to give me all this information. You deserve some reward for your long journey, but unfortunately I cannot permit you to return to Earth with it. 
Maybe I have something to say about that. So much for the effectiveness of your weapon. Now I will demonstrate one of ours. to the moon. Next. 
with an unfortunate accident. Sure. The Lido was meant with an unfortunate accident. A knife wound up in her back, yes. So just a few ideas of what type of entities might be lurking in lunar caves, calling for renewed manned emissions to our lunar neighbor. Yes. Now, until next time, may the power of the cosmos and of the Lido be with you. Yes. Yes. Yes.